come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're kind of sort of a movie review podcast. I mean, we watch movies. Exactly what we are. And we talk about them. Yeah, literally what we are. All right, we're going to review a movie? Okay. (laughs) Well, it's like a book club for movies. We're going to talk about it for a little while, then we're going to give you our reviews. We're going to shake it up a little bit. Or we Mm -hmm. talk about many movies, as uh, last week's podcast would tell you. Yeah, because like we talk about, and like generally speaking, we talk about a movie, but we talk about a thousand different rabbit holes. That's like, right. and we have seen yeah. over three hundred movies on this podcast, and you can I've go seen back two hundred and forty of them, and, <laughs> and listen to all those episodes on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find podcasts. And if you do, please uh, give us a, a like or write us a review because all of that stuff helps us continue our mission mm. told toward total world domination mm. who are the internet radio superstars sean michaela holly and i'm colin and tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by holly what up hey what do we watch tonight <laughs> we watched a movie called copycats Ooh, Ooh, by spooky <laughs> <laughs> is it <laughs> copying cats what's so scary about that what year was this made 95 and who was it directed by uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if this is right. It's John Amio or Amil. I'm not Amil? sure which it is. Amil. I think it's Amil. Yeah. John okay. Amil. Yeah. yeah. John Amil. Who you freak show listeners may know from the freak show worthy movie, The Core. The Core, yeah. The Hillary core. Swank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, was it Aaron, Aaron Eckhart? Yeah. They got to go. Eckhart, like, yeah. They got to restart the Earth's core. Right. Right? Yeah. Oh, God. This I like a movie I don't ever want to watch. <laughs> what else did he do? Uh, Entrapment. Oh, the Sean Connery, uh, Catherine Ash. Zeta-Jones. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> the man who knew too little. The man who knew too Bill little. Bill Murray. Is that a Bill Murray movie? Yeah. yeah, it's a Bill Murray movie where he's, he's the dumb he's, spy. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember that And movie. He's, done, uh, he's done a lot of TV. Actually, a couple shows that I really like. He did a few episodes of The Tudors and The Borgias, some uh, Showtime oh. shows that I like. Okay. Um, but yeah, he's done a lot of TV. But Entrapment and The Core, I think, are probably the most... That would be a great claim to fame. Yeah. Hey, I directed The Core. The Core. <laughs> the core. I would tell people that shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I directed The Core. Right? That just sounded like the dumbest fucking movie when I heard. Yeah, sounds so what, stupid. Was there another one that was similar where they had to go... Maybe the that maybe the it was the core. Like Isn't journey to the center. Of the no, earth? there's another one, but they run into monsters. It feels like what? they have to go tunneling into the center. Oh, whatever. The Are you sure it was journey, journey to, to the, the center of the earth? No, I saw that one, the <laughs> Brendan Fraser one, the uh, remake. Yeah. yeah, and wasn't there a sequel with the Rock? Uh, oh, there was a remake with the Rock, wasn't there? Or was it a sequel? Were kaiju involved? That was a reboot. Or something. Kind of sounds like the first. So. Uh, it feels like it was in the pitch black days. Oh fuck! I'll uh, either forget uh, it. It was a dark time. <laughs> um, I liked it. I like Pitch Black though. That was all right. Well, what yeah, was Pitch it? Like Two thousand two. I don't know that I ever saw Pitch, that, Pitch Black. Yeah. Really? I don't With think I Riddick? did. Mm-mm. The first movie that introduced Riddick yeah. is a good movie. It's a good movie. I don't think the I other ever ones saw it. are like they missed the focus. I think because yeah. Riddick Honest- is not the main character. I don't know if right. I've ever actually watched all of Riddick. But you, I mean, I wouldn't. Well, the new one's not all that good. And the they second tried, one was really yeah. bad. Yeah, and they but tried the really hard to make those movies. Good. God damn them. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I don't remember if I've Just ever watch watched any of them yeah. in its entirety. Because they kind of yeah. went the way that the uh, um, Pirates of the Caribbean movies went, where like the Captain Jack Sparrow Stupidly. is not the main character, and that's oh. what makes those so awesome. Right. right. But when the later ones are like, he's the main guy, like they like, suck. No, yeah. yeah. He's the yeah. spice. He's the spice. He's the spice. He's the spice. He's the what? The spy. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> you don't make it Dune, a main character. You coming just soon. Sprinkle them throughout the movie, and then you're good. Starring everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Are everyone they shooting is that now? I think. Yes, I think so. They are. They've definitely cast Everyone's it. Everyone's in it. All right. So, Copycat comes Copycat. to us from 1995. Yes. Uh, but the 90s were an interesting time for this specific type of movie. They were. Mm-hmm. This specific yeah. type of movie is well. Uh, the 90s were also, I think, like the heyday of the uh, the psychiatrist as hero movie. Yes. Yeah. But the other side of the psychological uh, thriller was the serial killer. Yeah. Movie. Mm-hmm. We had a large obsession with love serial them. killers in the 1990s. Mm-hmm. Why was that? It has not ended. I still love it. Yeah, but I mean, is it as well? Maybe it is. Oh, it is. Oh, are you kidding me? It is. Are you kidding? The resurgence the, is now. Colin. Yeah, I'm like, I, have you seen like how many 
Ted Bundy things does Netflix have right now? All right. the highest Five. rating podcasts like, are true. All yeah, of podcasts. true crime. Yeah. True, true crime, crime is in. Man. My it's favorite in. murder and such. I but love my favorite murder. Am I missing mm-hmm. it then? I mean, in the nineties, yeah. it wasn't true crime. No, it was. It was in the nineties. Like, it was uh, serial killers. Now it is. Yeah, but more fictional true crime. serial yes. killers yeah. based on true criminals. Yes. Because I think all those like direct to video, like uh, Dahmer. Uh, fuck you! And, uh, I hate that Gacy. fucking movie. Those are all terrible. They're all terrible. Those all came later. Yeah. 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 Who was Kane Hodder? He was uh, he was BTK. Oh, was yeah, he? he was both. He was yeah, all, yeah, Ed, yeah Ed which Gein is well. horrible casting for both of those people. It it because it makes Jason. no Ed sense. Just like a, like a slim old, old sleek old, 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 old man. And, yeah, it's a free old man. He's not Kane Hodder. He's not a yeah. fucking bulldozer. And BTK yeah. was like a, was a midwestern overweight dad. Yeah. Like, you want to see a good <laughs> Ed Gein movie? You got to see a movie called Deranged that had Robert's Blossom. He's the old. He was in Home Alone. He was the neighbor or the old Oh, the old guy. Oh, neighbor. Guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. That guy was never young. That so guy would be a good egg. <laughs> he, played, he played an Ed Shave that character. beard, he'd be good I can totally yeah, see it. Yeah, I can see that. Sense. I can see that for sure. Oh, yeah, that one's pretty creepy. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be nice to see that, yeah. watch that, know him as that, and then watch Home Alone. He's just like, holy shit. Because then well, the stories was... about him are true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he was Run, also, Kevin. the old guy in Christine, too. So I think that's how I always knew him. was like the guy who sold the fucking car. Yeah. Uh, Derange, yeah, I have it actually. I should bring that to the goddamn free show. Um, I've thought about it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Tom Savini's it's first been, movie. It's also, been oh, right. on is my that list for a while. Okay, right. Yeah. I'm all right. I know this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, serial killer movies <laughs> in the 1990s. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm assuming they really got their juice from a movie from 1991. I think called The Silence of the Lambs. Oh, who's in that? There's this uh, oh, woman, <laughs> Jodie Foster, uh, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. But The Silence of the Lambs started off this whole thing, which you see in a lot of these movies where there is a, uh, the, the serial killer is like uh, omnipotent. Right. Number one. And usually uh, our hero has to at some point go and talk to a one, one that's in captivity. Right. Is this like, because they did this in backdraft. This is the power well, yeah, of when Silence I talk of to the Lambs. Yeah. Donald Sutherland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That even backdraft. You know there's a backdraft, too? There is. Just came out. <laughs> just came out on Netflix. I'm sorry. This Shut is up. a tangent of, yeah. Shut Donald up. Sutherland's in it. Shut up. <laughs> he is. What? I watched a little bit of it the other night. I don't remember any of it. I like, was really, you, really you, No, I got back. drunk and I was like, I'm going to watch Backdraft 2. Yeah, I was like, did <laughs> you was fall asleep or did you just shut it off? No, I fell asleep. Okay. Are you going to Are you going to revisit? Backdrop ninety. Uh, it had to be like ninety four? three. Yeah, yeah 93, I thought it was. I thought it was earlier than the movie that made Fire a superstar because that yeah. came after Dude. Twister, right? Where it was like, now we can just make natural uh, phenomena. I thought tw- I thought Twister was after Backdraft. You might be right. Twister yeah, was after is. Backdraft. I feel yeah. like yeah. Backdraft ninety six. Twister and there yeah. we go. Um, that's right. Also, let's that's not why you come to the Twister. Saturday Night Freak Show. We're connecting all these. Ninety one. And- Backdraft was ninety one. It was yeah, before oh, yeah. Twister. Yeah. yeah, definitely before. Right. Twister, yeah. Twister is like ninety five, ninety six. I think it was ninety six. Wait, Independence 95. Day 96. ninety five, ninety six. Okay. Six. Yep. Speaking of Independence Day, this movie also shares a little bit of uh, DNA with Independence Day because one of the the serial killer is played by Harry Connick Jr. That's right. His right. cinematic career, where'd that go? Uh, it went. To, um, wait, didn't, it went to chick flicks. It really did. It did. Yeah. Uh, it also went to a talk show at one point. But and it went on. to uh, American Idol. Wasn't he in Hope Floats? <laughs> Yes, he was. <laughs> okay, Hope he was in Hope with Sandra Bullock. I hate yeah. that movie. And he was. In- <laughs> Everyone hates that movie. <laughs> I fucking hate that movie. Everyone hates that movie. Everyone hates that movie. I've never but seen that that's movie. Like, that's to a hate recent it. like change of opinion, though, because when that movie came out, it was huge. It was. Huge. It was well, Everyone loved Hope. Yeah, because chick flicks were just huge. I mean, that was the other thing. They were huge that, in the People 90s. were in- enchanted by that movie. <laughs> yeah, and now they were. people have come to their fucking senses, and that movie. I never liked it. Yeah, even when I was younger, watching, I was like, my mom loves it, and I'm like, fuck this movie. Like everyone is just mean and. Wasn't there a Ben Affleck Sandra Bullock movie? Yeah, they're on a train. Movie? They were on a train. Was it? Yeah. It was so, yeah. Forces of Nature. Yes. That's Fucking it. hell. Why go. do I know that? <laughs> that's it. Forces of you Nature. You guys are like speaking a goddamn foreign language to me right now. I'm a right. girl that grew up in the 90s. I know chick flicks. I'm also a girl that grew up in yes. the 90s. Yes. Sean was there too. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like outnumbered. Everybody knows Hope Float. Yeah. Hope yeah. Floats Harry Connick Jr., there. P.S. Uh, P.S. I Love You. He yeah. was in that he with Hillary Swank. Huge... And... I think, I, well, yeah. I don't think I saw it, but I can remember the. No, that was Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler was also in it, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan was also in it. 
Wow. All that's th- a fucking all star-studded. Three, all three men played Hillary Swank's love interests. Really? Yes. And her name was Holly, which I loved because oh, they talked in Irish accents. Oh, Jesus. All right. I loved it. Right, Sorry. So. Sorry. <laughs> it's a horrible movie, though. It's shit. Sure. It's total shit. Well, in this right. film, Harry Connick Jr., the star, that's not true. But he is in it as He's, a significant yeah. role. I don't want to say he's like the highlight, but he, like at the time, he was a highlight of this Actually, movie. So he like, isn't even a significant role. He's, he's the what, spice. He's, he's, he's the like Anthony 10. Hopkins. He's the spice. He's the Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So who is yeah. he in this movie? He's, well, I mean, do you want to get into the. the Yes. Story. What was we his just name? Daryl in. Lee. Daryl Lee Cullen. Cullen. All I was gonna say yeah. serial yeah. killers reason, have though. three names. And it's yes. usually yeah. a Lee. If it's a Lee, you really watch out. There's oh yeah, one yeah, of those. yeah, yeah. Anybody yeah. with a Lee is a Lee's, middle name. Lee's or Wayne's. Yeah, Lee's or Wayne. Yeah, <laughs> Lee's or Wayne's. It's just like holy shit. <laughs> that's why I ask everybody, what's your middle name? <laughs> just to be sure. <laughs> if it's Lee, to, I'm what if it's Lee? L E I G H. Then you're a girl. Well, then I'm talking to Jamie Lee Curtis, and I'm like, hello, how you do? Let's talk. Sean, what's your middle name? Parker. I have a serial oh, killer name. Yeah, it is Parker. I Sean that. Parker Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a man, that, a man be, with three first names. I'd be a headline. Yeah, yeah I'd be a headline. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. Wow, the things you find out uh, about uh, your name. Be my victim, but that's going back to the game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Colin, what's your middle name? John. <laughs> He's so bored by his own name. <laughs> John. Nah, nah. I don't think you. I don't think it works. Trouble. I think you're safe. Holly? Joy. Ooh, you'd be like, hmm. Hmm. you'd be on one of those trading cards that the Adams Family kids have. Oh. I think you'd be on one of those. (laughs) (laughs) I think. I would love that. Dawn. Ooh. Ooh. I like that. Mm. I think you'd just be Michaela Dawn. I did not know your name. Intimate details about each other. (laughs) I swear most white women, though, it's Marie or Anne or Lynn. I know. I think most, because my my mother's middle name is Marie, but that's uh, the Catholic upbringing because her sister's middle name. Yeah, you name it after somebody else. I don't know if that was a thing, but they're all Marie. Yeah, Marie, Anne, Lynn. I know. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Alicia's was Lynn. Yeah. Take your wow. yeah. take your chances of those three, and you're sure to win. I'm really I'm really glad I don't have them. <laughs> it would be what was uh, Eileen Warnos <laughs> or what was, what was her name? Um, you never hear her as the three. Yeah. No. The female ser- serial killers get off with the because no, there's so few of them. No there's three, so few uh, yeah. names. Because the whole reason they started doing it was to like more specify who the person was, especially yeah, if they had so common many first and Henry last names. Lucas's. Yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. Henry Henry Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. 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 But right. there's so few notorious female serial True, killers that they don't have to do that. Stick out. Yeah. Yeah. What was mm-hmm. David Berkowitz's middle name? They never wanted He was just David Berkowitz. Because he was Ber- Sam. Yeah, because it was, just, uh, cause it was Berkowitz. Well. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Because it's like, well, I remember Berkowitz. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie is about, like, it's a meta movie about serial killers, Yeah, it is. This is the one. So we had had Silence of the Lambs and we had had Seven, I guess, the same year. So we can't say this is Seven was just a couple months before this. You know, I, I I was telling you guys last week that I thought this was inspired by torture porn movies, but this felt like, uh, even though you know it's like uh, a Silence of the Lambs was a uh, a Ryan movie originally that mm-hmm. uh, Ryan went bankrupt, so I think it came out through uh, what was it MGM? MGM, or something I like think. That. I think so. And uh, Seven was a New Line Cinema mm-hmm. movie, so right. like they are studios, but they're like second tier. But Copycat is like. Straight up 18. Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, yeah. yeah this is 18. This is 18. 18. Yeah. 18. <laughs> and it always seems like eventually the major studios get around to going after like what's cool and in the zeitgeist. They get there, yeah. Making their own yeah. version of it. Um, Indeed. So it's like, okay, we're going to make a serial killer movie, but this is the meta serial killer movie where we're going to pay homage Right. To mm-hmm. all the serial killer, American serial killers of like the past 20 years. Yeah, it's this is a fiction. good idea for a movie. Yes. Should fan we fiction. be glorifying serial killers in film? Is that what it is, though? I, I mean, that that there's been that debate forever now. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah, I don't know. If I mean, he's still the villain of the movie. Yeah. 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 I think if you, I, it all depends on like the minutia of the of of the actual like the movie or the story or whatever. Yeah, I mean because, you could because uh, you, you could you could say that if there's a movie about incest, why is that glorifying incest? No, right. you're just highlighting a like story. You're, you're yeah, like you're you're telling a story. Like the the content of the story doesn't right. 
doesn't mean that you're glorifying this something. This is the you line. Sti- it, it's still like you're seeing the horrors of well, it. The you know? thing that it's about execution. Seems to me, yeah, but yeah. some of yeah. it is the, uh, well, what's a be- What's one that you thought was like uh, crossing the line into, because okay, here's the <laughs> Extremely the thing. evil. Well, usually, and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but usually when you see these films, the, okay, so I don't have a problem with them, obviously. I'm playing. Right, no, yeah, 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 right. sure. Yeah, because yeah. I like we the, know, the police <laughs> procedural kind of thing. It's yeah. the, you know, mm-hmm. the cop versus is the how yeah. they're gonna figure this out? And mm-hmm. now he's in the dark with flashlights and all. This yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, I'm getting excited. But the moral majority—I yeah. <laughs> don't mean the actual organization. I'm just saying, in general, a moral majority seems to think who, the people who are outside, the people who aren't us, right? right? Look at these movies about serial killers and see, like, somehow this is going to trigger latent serial killers that are out there. Yes, who, mm-hmm. this is going to inspire. They otherwise yes. wouldn't have had the idea. But they saw the movie. Yes. And they were like, you know what? This seems like a pretty good hobby. I should pick up my knife, sickle, crossbow, whatever, and head out into it. If that's (laughs) that's the case with the advent of the internet, we should have more serial killers now than we've ever had in human history. We should all be serial killers. Yeah. Yeah. I have family members who think this way. Yeah. Because we watch stuff like this that we are more prone and are uh, going to do things like this and also are championing. There's just there's like there's like no scientific evidence to back that up. There's like none. The only thing they say is that some of these guys, I think, uh, like Dahmer was, uh, what well, you know, they, they cite examples of like the two movies I think that witnesses said he was the Exorcist three, and uh, what was the other one? There's something else, but yeah, uh, Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I think because uh, because yeah. that yeah no now I see it. he now was I like get the it. Emperor is this guy is you know <laughs> right but he's all, the big shit also there's it's not like the, there's a difference between like those movies influence influencing him and him seeking out those movies because yeah. he's already interested in that exactly shit, and so he goes for it yeah he, like, the the intent is already there yeah he's already he already wants he's to hurt already people. at that point like right. he's yeah. already the entity he's already that there will do this stuff so he can seek out the things that will excite him in that way yeah that people that's like at. saying a beer commercial made someone an alcoholic right mm-hmm. an alcoholic is already an alcoholic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Beer, yeah. well and like ted bundy was was tapped into that too because he would leverage that argument in his own favor right he constantly would bring up the fact that like he saw was exposed to violent porn at a young age and that made him who he was and so like he was aware of that conversation in our society and used it to his own advantage Mm -hmm. so like right right. yeah i remember or no it was it was in the documentary Mm -hmm. uh the ted bundy tapes Mm -hmm. yes something yes it was i remember but when that came up i'm like oh shit i remember this like that was his 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 whole thing was like don't get into porn because porn will turn you into a serial. <laughs> Stay away like from me. jazz and liquor. Yeah, <laughs> um, sounded like a straight up Tipper Gore type right? yourself. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, I think that probably yeah. triggered her off. You know, like yeah. it gave her like a platform that was like the guy fucking said out of his own mouth. Right. You yeah. Know? Exactly. This is, well, and he did it. Right. So, so let's w- trust the like evil people to believe him. By yeah. that logic, Pornhub is like the greatest creator of serial killers. Yes. In yeah. this world, basically, because yes. everyone can access it now. Yeah. I so. imagine you. probably probably could find uh you know m- you know if you were a looking sub-genre. for it you know, there's a category in there somewhere that up. <clears throat> well but you right, know but I mean, that's that's like finding this the shit that fits your theory yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. that's exactly it yeah because yeah. yeah. you could find anything that if you, you have a theory you can find any you information can find evidence fit. causation yeah. does not equal correlation yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, or correlation this, does not equal you know, right. I was thinking, Whichever one of those yeah. is right. You know what y'all know what that means. <laughs> I got you. Correlation does not equal causation. Yes, yes. I was saying that the silence of the, or sorry, that copycat is like the meta, you know, movie that's like, okay, we've had enough of these serial killer movies, you know, these fictional serial killer movies that we're going to do the meta thing. But Silence of the Lambs kind of in a way was its own. It wasn't really meta, but it took this, it took like three serial killers, yeah, correct? And it kind yes. of did the amalgamation of, yeah, into James Gum. Yeah. Yeah. It took it's familiar stories and created this new story. Yeah. yeah. So I suppose it's all Thomas Harris more than it is, but whatever. Sure. Um, so this film is about, yeah, you know, now we're, we're 20 minutes into the show. Uh, <laughs> it's about. It's good uh, stuff, Colin. Hey, it's better than last week's where I think we got 40 minutes into the podcast. We're like, hey, Tremors 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you people like us just talking kind of around the play, or do you want to hear us I talk think they, specifically about the movie? Well, it's not it that depends on the I movie. think we do what we do and they like it. 
Um, so Sigourney Weaver is in this movie. Oh, she is. So, there's a lot of people. A, in I, this I really movie. love the cast. Of I this forgot movie. what the cast yeah. of this movie was, and holy shit, who's uh, the yeah. cast of this movie? Run us down. Who do we have? We have Harry Connick Jr. Ob's. Well, we have, yeah, but he's okay. So we, we're now. If he's you a cast seen this movie. Member. Yeah, but you're. <laughs> yeah, let her do it. I let like, me do it. Okay. <laughs> let me do it. God. She says, oh. Sigourney Weaver. We who just? I mean, come on. Who is Sigourney Weaver? Come on, Sigourney Weaver. Holly Hunter. Yeah, I forgot Holly Hunter was in this movie. And goddamn. Yeah. I love some Holly Hunter. You forgot the Holly Hunter is like the main character in this movie. Second, yeah. secondary, main, second lead. I She's like she the lead. It. Do you think they cast her because she has a similar speech pattern to Jodie Foster? Probably. I was wondering. I, I was like, she has. She is a it. poor she man's has, Jodie Foster. She has serious so, Jodie Foster vibes. I was vibes. watching this movie thinking she should have been the new. Uh, Clarice, Clarice over instead of Julianne Moore. Uh, oh, yeah. Over Julianne Moore. Oh, yeah. I'm just it's watching like, like you got Jodie Foster and you got Holly Hunter. Right. It's just like we yeah. made a mistake at some point. <laughs> I wonder if they offered <laughs> nothing to against her. Julianne. We probably. You wonder. Like, she, she said she made right. She, she said, made no, this. I need to do Batman versus Superman instead. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> but she uh, made this and she's like, no, nah, I did that. I don't need to do it again. Yeah. Well, yeah. We got Will Patton. Right. Yeah. Um, we love. will forever know from the postman. Are we yeah. getting? Shut up. <laughs> sorry. And from Ar- Gone in 60 no, it's, Seconds. It's Armageddon. Yeah, okay. It is and, Armageddon. and Gone in 60 and Seconds. And Gone in 60 yes, Seconds. Yes, very much so. Um, Dermot the, oh, Mulroney is in Halloween this. Halloween 2018. Dermot <laughs> Mulroney. Dermot Mulroney. Dermot Mulroney. Back in the, in I really had, like, while, you, while we were talking, I really had to, like, convince myself. I was like, it's not Dylan McDermott. It's not yeah. Dylan McDermott. They well, made that you can't that. even bring that into the conversation because now it's going to happen. Well, because yeah. it, it was in the same year he was in like in the line of fire. The yeah. Clint Eastwood movie. Yes. I think it was like I think so. You had them both on screen at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awful. Well, Why would that anyone do that? They would always get offered like the same parts or something. Like Imagine that. that. <laughs> I thought that didn't happen until like last year where Dylan McDermott and Dur- Dermot Dermot they got in a, a, they, weren't they in a movie together? In a TV show. In a TV show. In the, yes, in the, in, in the final was, show. Um, from yeah. Vegas to that, LA that, or whatever. Yeah, that it was. TBS show. Oh, yeah. that thing I got shit canned already? They're, yes. Yeah, they were yeah. both pilots. They were both pilots in that movie. Did and, you know that? Show. It was funny. That yeah. show was like almost 100% shot on a green screen. Did you know that? Oh, really? That, yeah. That's yeah. Funny. Like, uh, Every show is pretty I, much my shot brother made, Yeah, my brother made me watch it, and that does not surprise me at all. Well, but like, you know how like TBS will be like, here's your first look at this show I know you don't give a shit about, and they'll like make an extended long commercial about the making of I saw one of those and like the part of him like walking up the thing to the plane like it was literally like an area big enough around the door that was real and everything else was green we can do it they don't do anything real anymore no nothing's yeah. real it's all it's all an illusion god damn everything's computer. an illusion um so Sigourney Weaver is the uh, she's a uh, criminologist yes yeah Psychiatrist, criminologist, like because okay. she's Psychi- a doctor. She's a doctor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She studies serial killers. She has serial killers on the brain. Helen Hudson. That Helen, is her Hudson. Name. Yes. Helen Hudson. Yes. Well and done. She. So our <laughs> opening inciting moment is that she gives a lecture, which is a pretty good lecture about yeah. Uh, yeah. all the different serial killers, what uh, trigger you know makes them who they are, the way they are, and yeah. she is attacked in the restroom of this facility where she's giving the lecture. By uh, Harry Connick Jr.'s crazy Daryl Lee Colin Colin mm-hmm. <clears throat> and strung up by her neck like you know kills people and he's very like um, I don't know uh, freckly no I mean he's he a had, freckly redhead <laughs> yeah he is he's a good old boy <laughs> ginger he is uh, uh, Cletus Cassidy yeah <laughs> in this he role is. Yeah, technically he is. yeah he's, he is. That is channeling some serial killer I'm sure but you know basically but he's the, very, I got very feels, like Otis Tool vibes from it's, him it feels, yeah. See, yeah see there's you want to see a serial killer movie that kind of leaves you uh, wanting to take a shower afterwards <laughs> it's Henry portrait of a serial killer yep. yeah, yeah. Like, that's Rosalie. probably one of the darkest fucking things. And the idea that like evil goes unpunished, yeah, you know, yeah. by the end, yeah, it it's does. like yeah, like that's, Henry. yeah, that's yeah. a bummer of a movie. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. but probably one of the most honest like looks into the right. psychology and pathology, probably mm-hmm. yes. of serial killers. Michael Rooker's in that movie. Yes, he is. Yeah, he is. Um, the uh, so this incident causes Helen to uh, become an agoraphobe. Yes. Mm-hmm. So she locks herself away in in the most amazing San Francisco Bay apartment in the history of the it's world. It's huge. Yeah. It's 
gorgeous. It's right on the marina. Oh, yeah. right there. A lot of money Super from those cityscape out the other windows when you open them up. It's open like the yeah. whole side of the apartment's just floor to ceiling windows. Yeah, like, it's mm-hmm. and it's of course it's the '90s, so it's, of course it's a loft. Yeah. yeah, it has to be. Well, it's not like elevated though. Isn't a loft have to be like an upstairs? There was an, an upstairs. Open floor yeah. There was an upstairs. There was an upstairs. Definitely an upstairs. Open floor plan house. Yeah. Yes. Where I love these movies. I mean, I I, I, I would like. An I open truly concept. actually do, and I'm not mm-hmm. saying this ironically. Uh, the uh, the floor plan, the art design of like these houses, because what they do is like, uh, no one ever has like you have uh lights in your ceiling, but not in a movie. In a movie, everybody's got lamps. So it's yeah. all very moody and dark or whatever. Yes. And they have TVs in multiple rooms that are always on. Actually, I know it's an open floor plan. I do have to plan. say though, I have a lot of lamps. Do you not? Turn on your overheads. I will. I in my living room. I don't have an overhead. It's true. I've lived in a lot of apartments that don't yeah. have overheads. They just don't do like, the, the wiring for everything. It's a lot cheaper. See, I want to do, do, the I do this lighting in my house. Sure, I've yeah. actually tried it sometimes. Got, when you, you guys get, come over, I just turn on the under cabinet lights in the kitchen. Like, yeah, now sure. we're living. This is movie lighting. <laughs> you guys are like, <laughs> how come you haven't turned your lights on? Like, have yeah. we ever asked that? I think so. Maybe the first time I did it, it was like walking like, it's so dark in here. God damn it, Colin. You You pay your bill. (laughs) Yep. So, uh, so she becomes an agoraphobe and she won't leave her house. And then a, a series of murders begins to occur in San Francisco and the police, which is Holly Hunter. She's given charge of the case. And her partner, Dermot Mulroney. Yes. Is uh, they're tasked with solving these crimes, mm-hmm. but they discover off of the first victim that there is. Well, no, they don't even third discover. Victim. It. They don't. Third do, yeah, they don't discover it. They get, we a, get to the third they, victim is when we, I think, end up in this. Yeah, they yeah. get a they get a call. They get several calls to the station saying from like, Helen. From Helen, who's like really into this and like I, I am identifying patterns here. Yeah. that you're missing. That this is possibly a copycat serial killer yeah. because he's uh, a well, serial killer at this point. We don't know the copycat until a little bit later. Well, yeah. that's what she establishes, right? Well, she, she establishes says, it later. Right now, she knows she thinks it's a serial killer because she's uh, identifying the MO from the other two she knows of and she's putting them all together. It's like, this is the third victim. Yeah. But he's ca- he's copying uh, Albert DeSalvo, who was the Boston Strangler, mm-hmm. I think, with the first victim. Mm-hmm. Uh, the victim is posed and all this, because that's basically the thing that these guys do, right? This movie feels heavily indebted to Seven mm. in that way. It is yeah. like it's an amalgam uh, amalgamation of uh, Seven and the Silence of the Lambs, right? It is. Yeah. The, and then the, it gets to, and I know it came before, but it also feels like uh, I get a little scream, scream two in there. Later on, which it feels, but that's after the fact. So that means that's Scream definitely. was looking at this movie. I feel like Scream 2 was. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. I think Scream 2's got some vibes. It's got yeah. some Scream 2 vibes, but that that's them, those filmmakers looking back on this one, if that there's even a connection. I just felt it. I mean, yeah, once it's in the zeitgeist, yeah. you have no idea what people sure. are looking at and what, you know, where their connection I mean, is I got, coming from. I think there's definitely some rear window vibes in this, too. Only a because bit. it's yeah. a, but she's not witnessing anything that's going on outside of her apartment. Yeah, it's like you know? the end well, of her window. There's also, um, oh, what's it called? Wait Until Dark with Audrey Hepburn. Okay. Well, when he's sitting yeah. there at yeah. the computer. And I'm like, that's Alan Arkin yeah. with those fucking shades and that bowl cut looking going on. I'm like, this is Wait Until Dark. Yeah. What are you, okay, so what are you talking about? In Wait Until Dark? Well, I mean, for the, our listeners, they have the the, uh, the theater of the there's, mind here. Right, there's when a, he's sitting at the computer. Way earlier on in the movie, uh, you get glimpses of the serial killer as he's doing his work. So it's just very close-up shots of his face. He's wearing glasses, but they're, it's it's like they're um, they're tinted out. And so we only see reflections and everything. So we see his smiling face and his glasses and his hair. And he looks a lot like, have you ever seen Alan Arkin in Wait Until Dark with him mm-hmm. and Audrey Hepburn? Yeah. Um, it look, he looks just like Alan Arkin's character. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really similar. I've seen it's really, Wait Until Dark. I have. Yeah, I think that's yeah. my favorite Hepburn movie. It's a good movie. movie. Yeah. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, because everything else, I wouldn't be interested in, but that yeah, one I was. It's a good one. It no, especially this... because in, in Wait Until Dark, Audrey Hepburn is confined to her apartment because yes. of her disability. She's, she's yes. blind. She's blind. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I got I got some serious I agree. vibes with that. There is a lot. That movie has a sequence in it that if you've seen it, you remember where the screen actually goes dark. 
dark. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you basically are just listening to stuff as these people are in the apartment. It's my really dad, cool. My dad talked about this movie for years. Probably because it scared the shit yeah, out of him. I think it scared the shit out of him. And he always told me about it. It's like it's one of the scariest things ever, especially the jump moment in that movie. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh. Yeah. He always talked about it. It's a good movie. And that's from it the 60s. So yeah. You should go back, check yeah, out. Check out yeah. Wait Until yeah. Dark. So... I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I mean, I need to will. talk about her computers. <laughs> <laughs> Those Absolutely. 90s computers. She's got it's a three... compact, right? Yeah. You mm-hmm. remember the compact computer? Are they still I had, around? I had a compact laptop computer, when I was like first 18. First computer I ever had. Yeah, same. Compact. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Compact. Yeah. Uh, but Came with Weezer. What I, you know, <laughs> I think they've kind of in movies gotten away from this trend, but in the 90s, you really had this. Like every computer, like nobody would use fucking Windows. <laughs> or uh, Mac OS or whatever the hell it was mm. called back then. They all had. I think these they couldn't license them made. in the movies. Is that what it was? I think so. I don't it's think like, anybody would license. We're going to show shit. you some kind of uh, alien computer operating system. Right. But every movie had like their own unique operating system. Mm-hmm. Then eventually they're like, no, we should give people give the characters what people actually use. Right. So they are like, oh yeah, they're using Macs. I get it. I use a Mac every day. This is how you I want to see some prodigy up there. Well, you know, it's funny when I would watch <laughs> like, do we, have a, uh, do we have a moment where Gateway was featured prominently right? in, in movies right? throughout the early <laughs> 2000s or something? It feels like there was. Like there it's was some be. movie that had fucking Gateway computers that, all over. What the hell was it? Box. Yeah, I'm hoping it comes back with that the cow fucking box. cow mm-hmm. being yeah. spots all over. Yeah. Um, oh, can we bring back the dude you're getting a Dell guy too while dude. we're at it? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever <laughs> happened to him? He got, it. He got, he got arrested for marijuana. He got arrested for oh, possession. that's what it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was odd at the time in the 90s when you'd watch like foreign movies. Like, I mean, I'm saying like British movies yeah. or German, uh, Swedish. They would all use regular computers. Yeah. But here in America, Mm-mm. our special effects guys or whatever could differently. make up their own operating system. So they're all like this kind of, she's got a chat room going where it looks like the Matrix code. There's yeah. always like, there's three open black windows with white text just scrolling. Yeah, it up wasn't them. like an AOL chat room. It was just, it looked like DOS, yeah. but it wasn't. Like, it looked, I don't know, it looked like a, like a, like you said, a uh, special effects person like taking yeah. DOS but like tweaking it for this specific movie, but mm-hmm. it was a chat room that looked like yeah. That. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate the fact that it give gave all these uh, you know interface designers the opportunity to come up with like new and amu- mm-hmm. a new amusing kind of like this is how mail arrived. This is a job email. that has like started here and continues to this day. Like the CG guys who just like we need you to create a computer interface. Oh, dude, that I yeah. remember knows where this. This one, it's an, it's got to be like its own separate little it industry. Is, at this it, point. Is. it is. You know, what movie has some of the best though. Is Prometheus has some fucking amazing <laughs> interface design. Th- think about it. Like, go back and look. That movie's got some fucking beautiful interface design, and it's all over that movie. Like when they're inside the pods, but everywhere they do mm. the whole thing where they swipe it around the room and stuff. You know where that came from, Michaela? Mm-hmm. I saw that in a movie probably a year or two before that. It was called Avatar. Oh my oh god. god! But you guys oh haven't seen god. Avatar. Here we go. Avatar. But though, it's okay. The, the listeners oh. have seen it. They're like Prometheus. It looks just like Avatar. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I'm but sure yeah. it came from something before that. Uh, Minority Report. Yes. You know yeah, what? Yeah. One of the great like movie interfaces. Well, I don't know if it's the greatest thing. Star Trek, uh, the TV shows, no, the Next Generation, all that. Mm-hmm. They have a thing. They actually have a name for it. It's called L Cars or Look. Yeah, Art, it is pretty good. Library mm-hmm. content, something, whatever. Hmm. And they have like, I remember downloading a Windows theme. Do you remember those? <laughs> Windows, yes. Windows theme. Into- where you can turn your computer to look like fucking Star Trek control <laughs> yeah. panel. Yeah. We're way off topic here. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. So, they, right. So Sigourney Weaver <laughs> is housebound. She won't leave her house. Yeah. She's agoraphobic yeah. because of this uh, thing. There's serial killer killings happening. The police turn to her to please help us save, or, you know, the future victims yeah. identify what's happening here. And Sigourney Weaver figures out he is... Uh, you know, copying all of these uh, serial killers throughout. Yeah, history. at random. Right. right. There doesn't seem to be a pattern. Just at this point, there doesn't yeah. seem to be a pattern, but it's also it's down to the uh, placement of the bodies at this right. point. Like he's being very specific. It's, it's yeah. It's it's location. It's what's around them. Right. It's, lo- it's picture, position of the body. Picture it's, perfect at this exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah. There's also the I thought the core of the movie kind of uh, for a while was kind of hinged upon a uh, like a 
sexual tension dynamic. Maybe I'm off on this. Between so, multiple people. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, got, a lot of people. But this was I, I was really like this time watching it, I'm like, oh, this is where you know, because I'd seen it before. Right? Yeah. I saw it twenty four years ago. Yeah. yeah. When it I came think out. I saw it twenty three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or maybe even when it came out on video that year. When it came out on video that year. <laughs> That's um, when I saw it. And so, you know, I knew the broad strokes of what was going on, but this time it was like, oh, okay, that's right. There is like, so they established that, you know, Holly Hunter is in charge of the case and Sigourney Weaver, I did this in reverse, Sigourney Weaver is like the main star of the movie, right? She's the one who's going to provide the dramatic thrust for what's happening because like John Mm -hmm. Doe in uh, Seven, uh, mm-hmm. The killer needs an audience. This yeah. is what these serial killer movie right. serial killers do. They're creating works of art, quote unquote. Yeah, is and, this and, irresponsible? And, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, and at one point, Sigourney Weaver even says she's like to them, "I'm their muse." Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, I'm doing this for she's you. She's the pinup girl of serial yeah. killers because yes. they all know who she is. Um, and so, but there's uh, uh when so Dermot Mulroney. Seems to be trying to hit on uh, Holly Hunter. Yes. Who's his partner. Because they get along, like, really well. They have good yeah. chemistry. Yeah. For partners who just work yeah. together. Because I was yeah. like, I thought that he was married. Because doesn't he take a call early no, on? They, oh, they, he's, they imply she, that he, like, dates a lot. Yeah, she makes fun of him for dating a she's lot. She's like, don't you want to know which one this is? Right, she which girl you took out this lot. week? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's so that's yeah. what it was. Mm-hmm. But he really has eyes for her. Yeah. But when mm-hmm. he's brought into the, uh, you know, into Sigourney Weaver's situation where she never leaves the house, and he's like, well, I'll stay here and, you know, like, watch out for, mm-hmm. oh, what was he going to, he was going to check the chat rooms. I'll sit here and watch the monitor and yeah, she yeah. got she so got a threatening uh, email. Yes, oh, an AVI. Email. <laughs> email, you're oh, underselling the... it with email. It is a GIF that turns into a, a special it's effects a, video. It's a video. It's an AVI. Yeah. I gotta but how do you access the AVI in the world of 1995? It just pops up when it comes right to you. Okay, so this is the other thing. What year was the net? Mm. Oh, do we not oh, look yeah. this up? I, Wait, I I'll looked, look it up. I looked that up. It was later. It was later this year. 95? Yeah, it well, was I bring later the this, net year. Up this is only the year because, of the internet. Yeah. Yeah, because the net is like the movie that crystallizes in my mind anyway, like the way that the 1990s thought about like the internet. Mm-hmm. This new thing that had just jumped onto the scene. Yep. And that they were like it can do all these amazing things. You can get on there and, you know, hack people's passwords. You can mm-hmm. change hack- all the well, He's hacked our internet. <laughs> I think they actually say that. He's hacked our internet this. address is at what they said. At some point in yeah. this movie there's a the, because they play the AVI and it's like you know we need to get a tape copy of it. She, yeah. she says, right? Get a tape backup copy or tape, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because they're trying to figure out like how do we actually uh, you know get a picture of the the potential victim, right? The girl right. is threatening. Is yeah, you video. tape it. I yeah. mean, that's how you do it, right? Yeah. Makes I gotta sense. I gotta say though, like I I hadn't seen this since it came out. But I remembered watching that video when I was a kid, and it freaked me out. Back then, it was creepy as hell. Yeah. Well, it is kind of creepy. It, yeah, it's, it's creepy. creepy. Like, as, even though we look at it now, it's like, oh, it's so cheesy because obviously technology has changed so much. But even now, I was like, right. it's still pretty creepy. Because you got to think of the uh, um, the all the energy someone took to create that. It's yeah, like, mm, this person's not right. Well, they also <laughs> had the 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 morph. Right? The morph. Yeah. yeah, we talked about the morph. I know you haven't heard that term in like <laughs> twenty years, listener. <laughs> the morph. You remember that was the hottest new technology craze where one picture yeah, we could morph it, morph into another one. They use that in this movie in that scene. Well, a couple of them. Couple, yeah. But yeah, so a woman's face morphs into like a skull, yeah, a flaming skull thing. You know what this movie reminded me of? You guys haven't seen it. Dario Argento's The Card Player. It's also mm-hmm. about police playing. Uh, mm-hmm. The guy sends videos. Okay. Uh, I think that was uh, put in my mind because the actor who's in this movie, who I noticed early on at the lecture, like he's one of the guys who stands up, except he's not yes. like focused on. Yes. Is a guy named William uh, McNamara. He's an actor who is in Dario Argento's opera. And because I'd seen him in opera, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's William McNamara back there. <laughs> And then that kind of keyed me off as to where we were going with this movie <laughs> ah. very early sure, on. I'm yeah. like, oh, well, he's in it. And they're kind of making a point of him being in it, sure. but not really. Mm-hmm. But the idea of the movie is going to be like, does Henry Lee Caldwell, what's his name? 
<laughs> Daryl <laughs> Lee Cullum? Daryl Lee Cullen. Yeah. Daryl Lee Cullen. Is <laughs> he is be on the loose? <laughs> Is he is he out and now terrorizing? Right, because at this uh, point we, we don't he, know. Right, because at this point she thinks he's he's in prison because right. he was arrested that night that she was attacked. Well, yeah. Well, let's put it this way: we don't yeah. know what happened. Like we get to a point where uh, Sigourney Weaver is strung up in the bathroom and he's right there and he's like, "Let's have some yeah. fun." And then we cut to uh, what looks we find out is like thirteen months later, and we don't know what happened. We know she's still alive. We, we don't know where anybody else is. At that point, we don't. But they say pretty early on that he's in prison. Mm. The the cops say that the cops if he, say it. if he would be out, right. you'd, we, be the you'd be the one first to know. one to know. Right. Yeah. But it is kind of weird, and I wonder, you know, weird from a storytelling point of view. But obviously, I think the point of the film was to do this. Uh, that opening scene where she's in jeopardy, we never see a resolution to it. Right. Right. No, we only learn the bits and pieces the, the, as it goes the, on. It actually fades out as like a cop is running to possibly her aid after right. dude's already you know in the bathroom with her and killed a police officer. It fades out, right. and then you know title. And then we cut to 13 months later. And so we don't know of... the specifics of that conclusion until like five minutes before the movie ends. Right. Where the killer says what happened. Yeah. yeah, because he and his, I guess this was his master plan all along, is to recreate all of these serial killers that she would be able to identify. Right. Right. So this is a game that he's playing. So this prefigures Saw, right? The serial killers, I want to play a game. Yes. Yeah. It actually says that, doesn't it? At some point, he sends her an email yeah. that says, oh, it's a game for you. Yeah, because she's, right. she's playing chess, and then she gets her email about playing a game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Saw didn't come up with the concept. It's always a game between cop and serial killer. Like, yeah. That's how it's well, always Saw been. is like heavily inspired by Seven in many ways. Like sure. Seven's the movie. Seven more seven. so even than yeah. Silence of the Lambs. Let's it's not like, forget the movie called The Game. And the well, game. there's that, yeah. <laughs> there's that. But fuck that movie. I was saying for really? some reason I thought that, I like that movie. I don't like it, but that may be me. <laughs> I like the game. I thought there was some tie into this movie, but maybe not. Mm. Did David Madsen write the game? Maybe. I don't think he did. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the idea of the super smart serial killer that wants to play a game and has a specific audience, and there is some like uh, ultimate goal that he is trying to achieve. In this film, it's basically to get Sigourney Weaver and recreate, you know, be the copycat of her murders. Or not, she's murdered. Right. But to, I guess, do what the, uh, uh, um, God damn it. Uh, Harry Connick Jr. Jr. Yeah. That was like yeah. Dwayne. You're, you're caught between, because he's it? got three names, Harry yeah. Connick Jr. <laughs> There's that, his real name. You just want to call him Henry Lee Lucas the yeah. entire time. I know, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that like obvious? Like, yes, I keep you keep wanting Henry to say Lucas. that. <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. Is that the goal of, uh, that character, uh, the William McNamara character? Is he going to do what the other guy wasn't able to I do? I think that's the ultimate goal. Uh, but it, or is he, she's the audience. So, uh, she will eventually write the book, which will make him famous. That's very true because, well, we don't, I mean, if he killed the most like notorious, like, crime professor or whatever she yeah. is that's going to get him a book too I think right. even if like, she doesn't write it you're right. Right. Well, because yeah. his, at one point he even says something like like I'm making you the ultimate victim which what does that make me yeah you know implying right. that like this will make me famous regardless but also even if she doesn't write the book we do learn earlier that Harry Connick Jr.'s character has written a book yes so is that fucked up yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially because uh, yes. at this yes. at the point this movie's being released, that's like very illegal. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I get that it's kind of going off of because I forgot Natural Born Killers was 1994, mm -hmm. right? So that was the whole idea of uh, what fucking triggered all that. Was it Dahmer? It's because Dahmer and uh, Dahmer and Gacy were like kind of happening all at the same yeah. time there. Like man, that was like mm -hmm. a time for serial killer yeah. movies. But uh, I mean, Natural Born Killers did the whole thing of uh, you know the glorification, quote right. unquote, of serial killers in the media and making uh, you know these subhuman creatures uh, superstars, basically, is the, the you know the, yes. the economy. And so, Copycat is kind of saying it's kind of carrying on from Natural Born Killers, where it's like. You know, well, even John Doe, I think at the end, you know, this thing yeah. that I do is going to be remembered, talked about, and talked about, and discussed, and, you know, discussed forever. Yeah. 
And so they're trying to do these. And then this was the era where like the serial killer became the quote unquote grotesque artist, Yes, you know, who was like mangling bodies, but like, Oh, I respect it because it's art or whatever the fuck. (laughs) Uh, this is where my Scream yeah. 2 thing comes in because okay. of Mickey's whole th- spiel at the end of that movie yeah. about how he he's, he's doing it f- to be famous because of the trial, because of how mm-hmm. he'll be looked on in history and everything. I feel like they do a pretty good job in this movie, though, of like talking about how that's what makes them sick, is that they have this deranged view of mm-hmm. what they're doing that makes it art, and they make it pretty clear that that's what makes it so disgusting. Yes. I think they do a good job of that in this. I don't know that it's really glorifying I mean, anything i get his motivation which seems yeah. to be to become famous but i'm yeah. gonna be because it's like is he deranged and has to kill out of some kind of warped need it's more like he's a glory hound yeah and yeah. figures you know if i set all this stuff up she'll take notice of me mm-hmm. and then eventually i'll kill her and then achieve like you know well become the you know the if she's the greatest victim then he's right. the greatest serial yeah. killer I mean, ever the, you lived because yeah. he did all of the other the ones. impulse is still there though because he's clear like when he when they when you see him in these scenes killing people he clearly is getting pleasure out of it sure so the impulse is still there it's just a diff, it's more motivation this time with the the glorified side of it mm-hmm. yeah you know he's able to it seems like he's able to more focus it into a specific goal right than yeah. the other people were because they just really because they did yeah. it because they were compelled to do it yeah, they yeah. like doing yeah, yeah he's he's the movie serial killer yeah it's yeah. like i have this goal oh you know yeah right um but the uh i did like that the um that love triangle thing it's not a love triangle the the tension is sexual it, is tension it, thing is it a love rhombus Love Rhombus? <laughs> uh, maybe because Aww. Will Patton is also in there. Ah, he is. There's right? A call back. I love Patton it. Patton likes uh, Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter is kind of non committal. She's trying Dermot to just brush Maroney them all off from all of She's, she's like, I'm just going to nail some killers, man. Right. Yeah. Come and on. Sigourney Weaver <laughs> likes Dermot Mulroney. So yeah, there you that's go. Very um, true. That's rhombusy. But I guess I didn't see that coming. Uh. Uh, that moment that all of that in the script is building towards is that for um, just a completely arbitrary reason, it feels like uh, Dermot Mulroney is killed. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of the movie or, you know, yeah. uh, in the third act, not by the killer. Yeah. What was the point of that? A misdirect? Yeah, let's try and break that down. What is the point of Dermot mm-hmm. Mulroney's death in this movie? I mean, I guess I felt the shock of it, if that was what was intended. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. you know, it's like I felt, you know, if you're in a movie about murder and death, it's like I actually did feel the shock of, like, him all of a sudden just out of fucking nowhere, like, being right. dead. But I don't really feel the repercussions of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. What are you trying to say with his death? I was wondering if they were if they were trying to come back to that point when Sigourney Weaver is talking to Holly Hunter and she's like, you don't you don't feel fear, do you? You're not mm. afraid of anything. You're you're the hope that everything happens for a reason. I think they were kind oh, of circling so back from that. Of it? This is her. This is her coming out of that saying, fuck, like, okay. what was the point of him dying? Where's the hope in that? What's the reason behind that? Like, and now she's actually feeling something. Okay, That's kind of where I went with it. Because that's, that's his, good enough. Does his death, like, uh, yeah, does it motivate the other two characters into some kind of, I mean, maybe that is the insight, yeah. you know, the into their... Really, well, I mean, the only does, thing it really motivated was, um, what's his name, and Holly Hunter kind of reconnecting. But that's, it also... I think it... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, it also leads into... I think what you were saying is actually probably very correct about her yeah. not being because when Sigourney Weaver calls her out for not being afraid of anything and all that stuff. Yeah. That is also like obvious throughout the beginnings of this movie. Holly Hunter yeah. shows up to crime scenes and she's leaning on. Yeah, they were very uh, like, they're very flippant. They're very yeah. flippant yeah. about like, the dead yeah. bodies. There's a dead everything. body there. And they're right. like, hey, yeah. how you and doing? Blah, 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 it's, blah, blah. It's a moment that it, it feels off from like the central story, but it also makes death it brings death closer to the Holly Hunter character. Right. It gives her fear going into because the final point, conflict. Because at this point, she has separated herself from it so much. Right. Now it makes it real. This puts it in yeah. there for her and makes it yeah. real for her. And I think that is that seems like the purpose of it. So there you go. So. I think Holly nailed it. I think it's a little yeah. bit of a misdirect, though, too, because the guy that shoots him is the Asian kid yeah. from the very opening scene of the movie when she asks all like 
the men to stand up and then she's like oh if you're like white and 20 to 35 stay not standing the same guy. no that was not are the same you sure guy. I'm positive. that was not the same guy not the same guy okay well then who is this guy and don't why know the fuck that is, is he, that is what, a mistake did we find out his motivation or no. why he was there see no. that's that's a huge flaw well, the movie. only thing i thought it was like this a flavor. shot in a police office for no reason yeah it's a it, they're adding uh because it takes place in san francisco and san francisco is chinatown you know it's like these are cops dealing with like some kind because we go into the scene that it's unrelated, it feels like, to the rest of the movie. Right. Yeah. Where they're dealing with, uh, uh, I'm assuming, Chinese or Vietnamese uh, people who are having some kind of disagreement. Mm. Some of them are lo- on lockdown. It, it, or lockdown. it becomes lethal weapon four at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you're like, what does this have to do with anything? But uh, one of the guys, uh, one of the, the criminals who is under arrest um, gets a gun. From the Will Patton character, Will Patton leaves the keys desk. in his desk, yeah, because yeah. he goes off to deal with somebody else fighting, and so he gets. So I mean, I guess that's why the only reason I could feel that their nationality was like you know Asian was because I just it's thought it was San Francisco. I thought it was like she she thinks she has it narrowed down to like you know it's white twenty to thirty five, but maybe I thought I thought it was a misdirect to like she keeps saying it's this, maybe it's that, but only looking at the serial killer itself. This mm-hmm. is a random act of you know mm-hmm. some guy in a desperate situation, right? Wants to get out of the police station, so he takes, he gets this gun, and then he takes Dermot Mulroney hostage. And I was wondering if it was because of, like, are they playing this up as it's, like, her hubris as being, like, you know, this crack shot? Because this is what I always love in movies where they're, like, you know, you just shoot him in the uh, whatever, in the yeah, shoulder. Just, just, just disable him. Yeah. Just disable and then, him. And that's I actually, it. I see this a lot in, uh, you know, my job, you know, I work in news and people are always like, you know, whenever there's uh, some uh, a police officer shoot somebody, they always, they do ask in, in the comments of these stories, like, why didn't they just shoot him in the arm or the leg? And I'm like, I don't think it actually works like that in real life when you're no. pumped full of adrenaline and all this other and stuff. And cops But in are- the movies, it's like, I can hit you. If I want to hit you in the shoulder from yeah. 20 feet. Yeah. I can totally do that like dead bang. I'm a perfect, you know, bullseye that's, marksman. That's not the way it works because cops are told for, to aim for like uh, central mass. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to, that's to yeah, stop the situation. Power. You got to go for the central yeah. mass. So they're aiming this right here. Yeah, but Chest in this hostage situation, mm-hmm. which is probably one of these things a real life police officer would not engage in. Because you don't know if you're going to pull the trigger, if you're going to blow your partner's head right. off. You need to be very careful. But she's a crack shot, and so she ends up shooting the guy in the arm, just as we were set up earlier in Chekhov's scene of yes. or Chekhov's uh, target practice scene. Um, <laughs> Chekhov's kill shot. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she shoots the guy. He falls down, but it turns out because she didn't shoot him center mass. He's still alive. He grabs the gun and blasts uh, Dermot Mulroney in the back. So it is kind of like. Are we trying is, to break down the confidence of our main character at this point? Well, I think it goes back to what Hollywood said. Yeah. I think it's trying to say that, you know, that, that her character. Well, I don't know. What is it? I mean, it's a growth for the character. Yeah. But yeah. what what does it add to the climax of the movie? You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. so she is a character who's like kind of flipping about death. And uh, now it's like death has been brought home in personal because she actually has feelings for this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, okay. I don't know, I think it brings in just a fear for the main character at this point. Yeah. She's not entirely confident going into this final confrontation with the serial killer. She's not. Yeah. Because she's pretty great going throughout the whole rest of the movie. Um, yeah, I thought her character was like a pretty well. She's, I think, Holly Hunter. Maybe it's A is game. great. B, and how she I th- plays it or how, how it's she written? Pl- how she pl- uh, I, I can't tell the difference. I don't know if any of that's written or if that's Holly uh-huh. Hunter. I gotta believe that uh, is Holly Hunter. Um, she, I think she plays it great. Um, whether it's written that way or not, but like she pulls that shit off. Awesome. It's mm. kind of fucked up. She has to experience something that extreme to give a shit about what's happening right. like like your job is to serve and protect maybe take it a little more seriously yeah, but maybe that's the thing in these movies they always you know it's like you have the maybe if we look at all these movies maybe they all do this mm-hmm. right you have the cop who's like assigned with investigating these crimes the crimes are horrible but the cops basically uh you know investigate them as like because it's their mm-hmm. jobs so there's a distance yeah, and then eventually it makes it personal somehow but that's, but what, this that's one what i'm saying that's do it. like why does it 
It's your job to protect people and to solve this shit. It shouldn't have to be personal for well, you. That really just shouldn't matter. But would it be more personal if the serial killer, their target, had mm-hmm. killed uh, Duder? Usually that's where they would go. Yeah, yeah that I would think. make way that's, more sense. That's What's the movie go. example of that? I'm, like, it feels I'm sure like it's it happened a million times. Oh, yeah, but like <laughs> her partner gets killed. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah it's yeah, always yeah. the way it goes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it makes can, way more sense. I can't way. think of an obvious I know, uh, like movie, but but it happens. No, it doesn't do it. It happens a fucking lot. Yeah. There's always something. Everybody gets too confident, too happy, or they're settled into like uh, a this time it's uh, personal. False then you throw away your badge, and you're like, "I'm gonna fucking." Breathe. Well, so there's a false security they get like into in at cuffs? some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can always go back to cuffs <laughs> if you know this show. We can always go back to cuffs. <laughs> But they always get lowered, uh, lured into a false sense of security at some point. Whether yeah. it's like we think the end of the movie has happened and they've caught the killer, but mm-hmm. then they're just like, "Holy shit, we found some other clue, and it's not him!" And the partner dies and all that shit. But that's usually where it ends up. Like the yeah. partner yeah. gets killed. Well, he dies. It turns out that our killer has been uh, corresponding with uh, uh, um, Henry Lee Lucas <laughs> behind <laughs> just bars. Go with it. Yes. Yeah, I'm just gonna roll. Yeah. I'm just gonna lean into it. Yep. Um, Harry Connick Jr.'s character behind bars. So th- that is really weird. It's like Harry Connick Jr. shows up at the beginning, out in the open, as you know, trying to kill her, and then he's behind bars on a computer monitor, and then he shows up at the very end of the movie, uh, after the killer, you know, has been breaking into Sigourney Weaver's apartment and mm-hmm. and uh, laying her clothes out for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, the ants in the bed. Yeah, oh, yeah, and there's a bed. finger with in the, the book, book. With the book and yeah, the finger. Because yeah. he wants yeah. to be caught. Like, that's the whole psychology, yeah. right? Somehow he wants yeah. to be Yeah, he keeps leaving subtle clues, and they get a little less subtle every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But thank God when he restages her hanging by the throat in a uh, or by the neck. Yeah, the a, final copycat, if you will. Yeah, yes. in the stall at the, the Civic Center, or wherever the, the original. It was a university. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Holly Hunter is there to actually save the day mm-hmm. and uh, and put him down. Mm-hmm. Yes. Take him out. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Um, I found that difficult to believe, considering she got shot in the chest at least twice. She was shot, she got in, shot the in the shoulder, shoulder and, then and then shot in the vest. But she was in the chest. Yeah, she was wearing a okay. vest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can take a lot with a bulletproof vest. Apparently. Yeah. I don't there know was this, blood. But there was I have a little seen... bit of blood. That was, that was in her shoulder, because her shoulder was exposed. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Should oh, we yeah. All... I've seen the videos of that guy like shooting himself at point blank range with the we're wearing the bulletproof vest. Oh boy. You ever seen those? The guys like, yeah, no, I never want to see this. He's like, <laughs> he's like yeah, yeah, this is you want to buy this one. It's almost a Darwin <laughs> Award. Yeah. Oh god, you haven't seen that? I, uh, I we're gonna look this I don't up need to watch. I don't People need to do watch. I see the dudes who accidentally shoot themselves. In the I think foot. it's a sales yeah. pitch video. Probably. For the best. It's like this vest. You gotta so be awesome. real confident. I that would shit. stake my life onto it. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. I don't want anything to do with people like that. No, nope. <laughs> I imagine you could still break a couple of ribs. Yeah. I've never oh yeah, that's the thing. They always, Absolutely. they're always Absolutely. hugely bruised, or they've broken ribs, mm-hmm. or in training day, it yeah. goes to the vest. It's not, yeah. There's damage. <laughs> yeah, Definitely. I would. Yeah, even if I was wearing a vest or two, even you know, well, they Rene, don't... Rene Russo was wearing two vests. Two vests. One of, one of them went through. That's well, they don't three, call them all. bulletproof vests for nothing. They actually are bulletproof, unless you're yeah. shooting cop killers. Yeah. Oh, that's right. With the Teflon coated. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It all little, goes back to lethal you gotta, weapon. You got to cut the little cross in the <laughs> yes yeah. at the top, okay. like mm-hmm. Chief Brody did when mm-hmm. he's uh, making bullets at oh, home. Yeah. I got a reference for everything, it. folks. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do that in Red Dead Redemption. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. It's one of the ways you can mod your weapons. Oh, you can see fun. the tier bullets. Yeah, that's Ooh, right. I like it does that. more damage. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking does rip more damage. Though. Yeah, guys up. And when you do it, you actually see the animation of you sitting at the fire doing it too. It's pretty awesome. God damn it. All right, so uh, are we missing a thematic component to this movie, or uh, have we have we brought ourselves to the conclusion Harry Connick Jr. ends the movie also? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, he does. Yes. I kind of like this ending. His staring yeah, face. Yeah, I did not. <laughs> I mean, it feels, well, I don't know, why, why, why not? Just from curiosity. Not that it it's just, wrong, but. Like, it, it, was, it could have ended before that. That didn't yes. add anything Agreed. to the movie. Agreed. It definitely could have ended before that. Yeah. It, did, it didn't do anything for me, except for I guess he needed more screen time. I don't know. I like the paycheck. fact that this is uh, that it's just, it's a thing that's not going to end. Like he's constantly he has like he's saying in he his narration disciples. he has disciples. Yeah, and he's always people to, out there. The, the the TV show the following is comes after is this after this because yeah. he's got fan letters and he's writing. Oh, and he may be getting a pair 
of uh, <laughs> oh, squirrel covers. Oh, boy. Squirrel covers. Oh, oh. I, forget, I tried to forget about that. <laughs> so, funny story about that. Oh, oh no. No. <laughs> No, no, it's actually funny. Um, the director told Harry Connick Jr., he's like, in this scene, I want you to come up with a ridiculous thing to call women's panties. Just come up with the most ridiculous thing. And he came up with that because his brother-in-law actually says that. Well, mm-hmm. he found it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He got it. There you go. Yeah. May it That's live in uh, He married into that family. Right he sure there. did. <laughs> Squirrel covers. Squirrel covers. Squirrel covers. Yeah, he wants Boy. some autograph and sent to her. Oh. Sent to him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So maybe that's... Uh, <laughs> and we'll copy. end it with that's squirrel enough. covers. And, uh, <laughs> on that note. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Squirrel Copycat. covers. <laughs> squirrel covers. Copycat. All right. So uh, we're going to go around the room, listener. We're going to tell you what we thought of this movie and whether you should check it out. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon Igor, the mailman. So Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thank you, sir. He's wearing, he's got red on today. He's got his little red pantsuit on. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, what's Igor's cosplay for copycat? It's a red, it's a little red pantsuit. It's pant a red pantsuit. Pant okay. <laughs> yeah. It's very cute. And maybe with, with the, red pumps. The, the rope around the neck. Well, he's always got that, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's just his, That's his, it's like his It's like his <laughs> necktie his at this point. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to remind you fine folks out there that you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or even Instagram mm. at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, tonight. About the movie Copycat. Christian Steele writes in and says, you're in for Harry Connick Jr. being a super creep like you've never seen him be before or since. Hard to believe it's the same guy that's saying it had to be you. That's true. Yeah, Yeah, he's becoming mom crooner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like a Michael Buble now. Yeah. 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 More prolific than that, even though. He was. Before, yeah. Yeah. He was before Michael Buble. He's proto Buble. He's got like probably three Christmas albums. I would say Buble became the Connick Jr. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No. Buble's more efficient, though. He's had to do less effort in less time. Yeah. 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 Harry Connick Jr.'s got like 20 CDs or some shit. Yeah. And I think he actually sang original material on like Michael Buble. And Michael Buble was not in a movie of the caliber of Independence. Or any movie. You're goddamn right about that. All right. Uh, Christian also says, uh, also, yeah. Squirrel covers. Grant Parrish. (laughs) Indeed, sir. (laughs) Grant Parrish writes in and says, question. Uh, Mm. Yeah. Is Sigourney Weaver the coolest actress? She's up there. Well, she's she's up there. A lot of good shit. Yeah. She's a lot of good shit. I just shit. forget how tall she is. Well, she's a queen. We haven't really talked about her a whole lot about this movie. That no, she's we haven't. In. Because she's not the problem. <laughs> she's but not, she's, she's not, but I mean, she's, I think she does. She has a lot of cred right. for, uh, you know, Alien, obviously, and Ghostbusters. I mean, she's yeah. in like mm-hmm. two Titanic uh, hits. But I think, oh, like, are you I say realized. Avatar? Isn't she an Avatar? An Avatar. Oh, God damn <laughs> Listen, it. Are we forgetting about Working Girl? Come on. <laughs> well, and Half Moon Rise. And, okay. She's done um, even, a lot of even stuff. Even out of that, she's done a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. She's done a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Very good. But um, the, uh, the the moment that I realized that Sigourney, like, uh, you know, I mean, I guess you always kind of think that Sigourney Weaver has this cachet, but the moment I realized that Hollywood was able to exploit it, was Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods, that's what I was going to say. I'm like, oh, yeah, she is the coolest fucking... She's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Like, who else would you pick in that role? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, sorry, that's a spoiler for Cabin in the Woods. Uh, (laughs) Stephanie (laughs) Pearson writes in and says, I love that movie, Copycat. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, About last week's episode, which was Tremors 2, G-Money writes in and says, Tremors 2 Aftershocks is a great sequel. I'll always remember that playmate scene, but never bought her as a form of bunny. Aside from that, they amped up the effects, forwarded the lore, and they go to Mexico. Is that all yeah. they need to do is go to Mexico? I mean, they did all those things. They blow some shit up. They, they start some, some fires. Up. He's there saying all of this is a positive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. I mean, I would See our episode uh, for sorry. our thoughts. I know. This is, he wrote this before, <laughs> before he the episode. Oh, gotcha. yeah. okay. uh, Jacob Kotner says, I haven't seen Tremors 2 since its release, but I remember it being a schlocky good time. Sure. All right. Andrew John writes <laughs> in and episode. says, 
<laughs> That's right. Uh, Andrew John writes in with one word. Maybe it's two words. It's put together. Ass blasters. There you go. That got it's said a, a lot during even, the It's not Trumpers even hyphenated. Oh. I know. Maybe he's commenting about us talking about Tremors Yeah, 2, maybe he's calling us ass blasters. Or he's talking about Tremors 3. He's definitely talking about Tremors 3. We mentioned ass blasters a lot, a lot in a that episode. A lot in that movie. Because it sounds more interesting. <laughs> It's not. Okay. I know, but you telling me about it is the way I, I want to experience yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, speaking of that, speaking about of our blasters. episode, The Manitou, Jonathan mm. Holt writes in and says, I've never actually seen this one, but I still enjoy the podcast for the mental picture you guys create talking about movies. However, I almost puked when Colin put the image of Igor and his pus straw. Oh, in yeah. My head. That was, I re listened to that, and that was the grossest <laughs> thing we may have ever said on this show. <laughs> You're By welcome. Far. Disgusting. Definitely the grossest <laughs> thing. Wrong with you. Oh, oh. it was fucking it's bad. Nasty. I'm sorry you had to imagine that. You nasty. Good sir. No, don't ever do that again. <laughs> I'm very happy that I can contribute uh, to your delinquency. But I appreciate uh, him listening, even though he's not seen the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we recommend those are probably the best ones to listen to if you haven't heard yeah, the movie. Yeah, sometimes, uh, especially the movie. with the movie that crazy, like your imagination can really fill in the mm. gaps pretty well. Yeah. That movie's, than the movie. yeah. We also recommend watching that movie, though. Yeah. 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 Uh, Maya Manson, Meredith alone. Maya Manson writes in and says, Graham Masterton's books range from batshit insane to almost understated. Trauma is probably my favorite in the understated category. His Katie McGuire detective novels are surprisingly good. Interesting. Yeah. I'm still I, I'm, reeling that that is a series of books. The Manitou? Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm reeling that we have people who have listened who have read a bunch of this shit. Because this guy yeah. is extremely prolific. Yeah, like, apparently. He is, How uh, have I gone this far in my life without knowing any of this? Well, yeah. You got to read more. Right? Right. Yeah. I worked so. in a bookstore for six years. <laughs> you can work in a bookstore for six years and not read. <laughs> well, worked in but a bookstore I, you and think I would have saw it shelving it. One yeah. of the Graham Masson. Any time in that six years. Uh, shaking subject matter right since says John Singing Rock, that's uh, Michael and Sarah, was yeah. married to Barbara Eden. Oh, what? Yeah. really? Yeah. Bravo, dude. Huh. Yeah. It's a power couple. Divorced in 1974. Nice. Uh, we put up a picture of uh, Miss Quamacus from the Manitou. Michael Whitaker said he's not finished. Put him back in for another hour. <laughs> he definitely was not finished. <laughs> it's a movie about a guy who's birthed out of a out of the back of a woman's neck. Uh, Novatu Judoka wants us to know that uh, 1974's Abby, which we talked about on oh, the yeah. show from the same director, it's an, a black exorcist ripoff, is on YouTube complete. He oh, says, man. "Live the dream, Colin." I might have to try and check. I that know. Out. I said I, um, I was going to watch it, and I forgot. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> thank you, uh, Johnny, New Jersey. That's right. Uh, about man's best friend, Andrew John writes in again, and he says, uh, I listened to this episode, even though I've never seen this, but I've always <laughs> wanted to. I found it on Blu-ray at my record shop yesterday, what? and I had to pick it up. I'm going to watch it shoo- soon. You also asked for pup pics, so here are my three best friends. Now somebody has to go to our Facebook somebody inbox. Else find this. I just tried to look for it and I can't. I I have, oh for the I'm, love I'm not able of to. God. Well, oh. thank you again because on that last episode, I think we said show us your dogs. Yes, right. yes. Show us your dogs. And, I want to make a plea for uh, show us your cats as well. Yes, kitties. Uh, please, I would like some cat pictures and bunnies. All your furry okay. Calm friends. down, Holly. <laughs> I love bunnies. All right, so we got uh, Andrew showed us Chloe. <gasps> Puppers. Oh. That's Chloe. Oh, hi, Chloe. All right. Uh, we got Dexter. Dexter. There you go. Oh, my God. Dex. Kayla loves this. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love the seal head with the ears. Happy I love puppy. the seal head with the ears back. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Right. And we also have Leia. Oh. Oh, she's beautiful. Look at those eyes. Oh, so cute. Oh, my God. Oh. You have three dogs. I'm so jealous. Oh, That's amazing. All so right. So, cute. again, we're putting Damn out it. the call for show us your dogs. Yes. <laughs> and uh, let us know uh, if they watch or listen to the show with you. Yeah, please. Or watch the movies with you. Yeah. yeah. Especially Man's out. Best Friend. Yeah. Do- That's a dog how, how movie. Did they, I, I want to know. How did they feel about that movie? I don't know. Well, I, I, remember, don't, uh, I don't know if I'd let my dogs watch that movie if I had dogs. Yeah. I mean, it's like dog softcore porn yeah. at that one part. So Just maybe watch them. I mean, it's like uh, dog watch torture. The cat, the cat but the dog, eating the, dog eating the, the dog, cat. It's dog wish fulfillment yeah. and a lot of things. The mailman attack, eating the cat. It is wish fulfillment for dogs. True. Depending Just on, on the dog. We're going to need some photographic evidence. Because I think watching the dog, watching 
the movie is, I mean, that's really where it's at. <laughs> Scream Factory owes me residuals. Yeah. I just made a sale for them. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then that means, uh, uh, did we tell people? Yeah, we did. How they yes, can get a hold of us. So uh, yeah. now we're going to go around the room. We're going to tell you what we thought of Copycat. Colin! <laughs> Colin, what did you think about tonight's movie, Copycat? Well, I'll tell you, Sean. Please do. Um, yeah, I, this is. Uh, it felt like one of the most mainstream movies that we have watched on the Freak Show. So I was kind of like sitting there going, like, would you either have your Freak Show head on or you have like mainstream movie head on? We have many right? heads down here. <laughs> yeah, they're usually um, just sitting around. Heads. It's weird. Yeah, so I was kind of like in a schizophrenic. I mean, like I said, I haven't seen it first since the first uh, uh, watch. I mean, it's not a bad movie. Um, it does kind of feel derivative of, I mean, if you go back now, I think, you know, time has probably said that, you know, I mean, I could be wrong, but it seems like, uh, the silence of the lambs and, uh, seven are the defining serial killer movies of the, well, and maybe Henry right on the other side yeah. of this, uh, uh, serial killer movies of the 1990s. This one does kind of feel like, um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it as a film. I think it has. Good performances all around. I don't want to underplay Sigourney Weaver's yeah. part in it because she's really good. Because when you're watching her, I mean, I've seen Sigourney Weaver and other things. She is committed in giving her all. Holly Hunter is very good. It's just a well-written character, I think. Dermot Mulroney is good. Um, so everybody's good. It just kind of, I mean, again, I have this thing against like the way that 90s movies look and how they're shot. But that's a personal bias that I have. <laughs> Uh, but this movie has that 90s stank. Everything does. I mean, let's face it. In the 90s were the worst year, worst decade, at least for horror cinema and for thrillers. Um, uh, but beyond that, I was kind of like, eh, you know, I mean, do you need to watch it? I don't know. I mean, if you've seen Silence of the Lambs and Seven, I think the only folks who really need to see this movie are, uh, you know, if you're a fan of serial killer thrillers. In which case, then I think you will probably get, you know, some mileage out of it. Like I said, it's a well-produced Hollywood slick, you know, uh, film about that subject. And if you're a completionist, then, you know, by all means. But other than that, I mean, I don't know. It didn't tick off. Like, it's not like an exploitation movie. It doesn't really feel like it's got any juice to it. It's This is an actorly kind of movie. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it doesn't really feel like it had uh, 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 that spice. <laughs> the spice. The spice was missing missing from it. The entertainment value may vary. So, um, well, I guess when you put it up to like Zodiac, Zodiac's like a master class. Oh. Right? Zodiac's Zero a master class. Yeah. But that came in the 2000s. Yeah. yeah. Um, this that was is, almost a decade, more than a decade later. Yeah. That's and, a league. It's like 20 years later. <laughs> yeah. And Zodiac does feel like it's going after something more substantial than this. I mean, this, you know, really does feel like Hollywood cop movie. So I don't know. I'm on the fence. I'm sitting there going like on one hand, it's a well-made movie. It's got performances that you do well to check out. But on the other hand, like I said, I'm saying that it's like you've, you have kind of seen this before and probably I would recommend the better versions of it. Uh, uh, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I think you could probably like, I guess my personal feeling is I saw this in the theater in 1995 and have not watched it since. So I think you could probably skip on copycat. Sean, what'd you think? There you go. Uh, I am decidedly not on the fence about this movie. I am on uh, a specific side of the fence of this movie. Um, I really enjoyed watching this movie tonight. Um, it, it's, you, you talk about that spice. It's got that spot. It's got that 90s spice. Nice? Oh, it's, got spice. That, it's got that 90s, oh. like that oh. taste. It's called the like, stank. Oh, We've it's, established it's, it stank so good. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. shirts that were so <laughs> long, 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 long. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Computer, then, computer jargon that oh, doesn't exist. It's so good. Oh, I really enjoyed watching it tonight. I forgot about this movie. Again, this was, it was, I was uh, probably very young. Um, if it came in 95, 95. I was just like foot nine years old. Mm -hmm. I think I have my mom to thank for just probably like, D -d -d don't watch, don't watch this movie. While she's watching, I'm just like peeking out bet between my fingers going, what's going on? Um, so I haven't seen it since then, but God damn it. I forgot about this movie and I forgot how, I, how good it was. 
Um, I forgot Holly Hunter was in this. She kills it. Um, I've been watching a lot of like uh, earlier Holly Hunter movies. I, I think it was uh, Raising Arizona. I Wait, watched that not too crash. long ago. That's the one you're thinking of. No, no uh, Raising please. Arizona. Um, <laughs> what's the broadcast news? Broadcast news. I just watched that the other day. Um, I really like Holly Hunter in her earlier roles. Uh, she's very good. Sigourney Weaver kills it in this movie. Um, everyone's doing really good work in this movie all around. Um, the subject matter is right up my alley. Give me a serial killer movie. I'm all for that. I haven't watched like a good like serial killer movie in a while. Like the there's a specific scene in this one I which I thought they pulled off very well, which was just like uh when Holly Hunter gets to the crime scene of the woman they find in the bathtub, um, her walking through the house and the score they have underneath it, mm -hmm. I thought was great. Because it almost plays like this the killing scene is happening at that point. Yeah. But she's just walking through the house picking out things she wants for evidence, making her way, because we don't know where she's going, which mm -hmm. is which is great. We're in, we're in a reveal at this point. And yeah. so her walking through and the music up to that point, uh, it's very good. Um, I, I think that this is a really good, it's a really well made. Uh, yeah, it's 90s as hell, but man, um, it's got everything I like about it. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I recommend the hell out of Copycat. Um, yeah, I'll watch this one again. This is good. It Two hours flew by like that. Loved it. Mm -hmm. Loved watching it. <laughs> Michaela, what did you think about this movie? <laughs> Colin, I kind of agree with some of the things you're saying. It's like this movie's not above anything in some aspects. Like there's that scene when they're, they they play murder by numbers by yeah. the police in a police station. Like, but this movie isn't real. Like it, in some ways it's like a paint by numbers serial killer movie, but then it makes choices. Like we were talking about with uh, Dermot Mulroney getting killed in the police station mm -hmm. that don't, make any sense but also don't add anything to the movie so like there were parts of this movie i really enjoyed but like i do agree with what you were saying colin that like you've seen this done better before and this is clearly like how can we cash in on that um type of movie but that being said for it being that type of movie it is a really well-made version of that um and like there are good performances and there's a lot of good people in it and there are parts that are cool and i think if you're a true crime fan it's fun to like piece together the things you know about famous serial killers to see what he's going to copy next like that is really mm -hmm. interesting yeah. um because it's kind of annoying when like movies and tv shows will like take traits of a famous killer and apply it to someone else or like or just won't call it what it is because they're right. so afraid to like right. like they're, well, they're afraid, afraid they're gonna, of getting sued they're, well they're Some afraid they're gonna perpetuate things yeah. yeah but like well, not, not only that, but just there's like the idea we were talking about before yeah. that like you're going to perpetuate the copycats if yeah. you, you know, that's the like, that's the reason why you don't hear about serial killers in our media now the way you did in the 70s, 80s and 90s is because like that's kind of been shut down entirely to not encourage copycats. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I'm on the fence, but I think I'm leaning towards recommend just because it is a really well made movie and it has good moments and it has really good acting. I think it's a little over long. I think you could trim some fat and maybe tighten up yeah, some things. I think so too. Uh, or maybe even just connect some dots that are in there for no reason. But I think you should check it out. Holly? Yeah. Um, I, I I wanted to watch this. Um, I had read an article. I think it was on Bloody Disgusting. And it was like forgotten movies mm. of the 90s kind of thing. And they were talking about how it was so unfortunate that this movie came out so close to the release of seven because had it come out before, just like a year before it would have blown up so much more, but because it was so close to seven that it was just kind of tucked under the rug and totally forgotten. Um, but Sigourney Weaver has said that she is most proud of this movie and that she's really sad that it did get pushed under the rug because of what it came out around the movie um, or her performance both yeah. she's really proud of this movie and she's she's really, she's really proud of her really performance. Good. i think yeah like i think holly hunter was great i think sigourney weaver was fantastic um ever since i was little like i've always remembered harry connick jr in this mm -hmm. like i didn't remember much about this movie but i remembered him so clearly he's just going over the top and it's wonderful um yeah, I'm I'm totally with Sean. I this movie's like my bread and butter. Like it's got the 90s stank and I love a serial killer movie and I specifically love like the crime drama of a like the the police drama of a serial killer movie. You know, Zo uh, Zodiac's like one of my all-time favorite mm -hmm. movies and this to me is kind of like a 90s Zodiac kind of feel. Um So much so that one of the characters actually is in, is in Zodiac. 
back. What? Dermot Mulroney is in Zodiac. Yes, well, yeah, he is. but the the captain in this, who's also an alien resurrection with yes. uh, Sigourney Weaver, yes. it, it, it supposedly worked. Work, he works Zodiac. Zodiac. Yeah, Zodiac. He's in San Francisco. Yep. Yes, many Zodiac ties. So many cool things. I love it. But no, I, I, I kind of feel like this movie is like serial, like serial killer fan fiction in a way. Um, but I kind of love that it's it it targets people like me, people like Sean. I know yeah. Mika- like Michaela, like we all love serial killers and we love like the true crime stuff. Um, so this is yeah, this is totally my kind of movie, and I agree. I think that I think it goes by really fast. I think the two hours goes by really fast. But I also agree with Michaela that you could cut a lot out. Um, but I think it's really well done. I think it's entertaining as hell, and I I think that if you like a thriller kind of movie, I think you're gonna enjoy it. I, you know, this is the kind of movie I might recommend this to my parents. Oh you yeah. Know? I might actually recommend this to them. I think make, I think a lot of people would enjoy this. Gonna make good um, thrillers like this. Anyway. Yeah, I think it's fun. The serial killer thriller. Yeah. Now they're like uh, made for Netflix or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my friend Dahmer. Or well, they're trying to do that the true crime terrible. thing. Right. They're trying to do Halloween. They're trying to turn Halloween into the Halloween twenty eighteen. You guys have made me want to go back and watch the Bone Collector. <laughs> ah, you know what? I do too. Her murder by if, numbers. If nothing else, because uh, there's a new Bone Collector show coming out. What? Oh, I, I think NBC's doing that. Lincoln. Just stop. Yeah. They're doing Lincoln, which is the Bone Collector series for TV. Yeah. Yep. All right then. Yeah. Well, there it is. Uh, that's uh, Copycat. Yeah. Next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Michaela. <laughs> Michaela's, shouting from now she's on. got a series going on yeah. here so Michaela, wait what's it gonna be <laughs> what are we watching right. next week next week we're gonna continue our man versus nature Ooh. summer with William Shatner in Kingdom of the oh, Spiders <laughs> alright 1977 Shatner. William Shatner I don't right. think we ever regret a Shatner pick no I haven't show. yet I don't think. <laughs> he's the sheriff of a small Texas town that's being overrun by spiders of course <laughs> I'm down Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. I just watched a Shatner movie called Incubus. You heard about this? That sounds oh, no. awesome. I have heard of that. It's the only, yeah. is it one of the only movies that's ever been shot in the made up language of Esperanto? Oh, gotta oh, watch this. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. right. All right. We'll have a conversation about that one. Okay. So until next week, we hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>